Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from IT Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab determinator labs. The video number 27. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been working now for four videos on how to deploy Windows 10 using uh, two of the most famous uh, tools, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and the Windows Deployment uh, Services. Uh, we have been following the steps of uh, uh, one uh, of the uh, YouTube YouTubers or a channel I have found on the YouTube called David Brother Barbarius. This guy has made uh, an MDT lab uh, uh, how to deploy Windows 10 using MDT and WS and it has a very detailed uh, documentation on how to do it. Uh, he has uh, scripts uh, to do it. He has uh, uh, written steps to do it. So I am following his steps. I have taken his documentation. He has a documentation that was uploaded on a OneDrive uh, or, or his OneDrive uh, space. And I am following his steps on how to create a Microsoft deployment uh, lab or environment in addition to the WDS or the Windows deployment services to deploy Windows 10. You can deploy Windows 10 or Windows Server or Windows 11. So I am following his steps uh, and I'm trying to enhance his lab because there is some steps that he didn't complete so I will complete it and there is some, some steps and some uh, subjects he didn't discuss I will discuss concerning the uh, MDT there is some uh, updates concerning the MDT and uh, there is some steps that can be shortened or there is some steps that takes a lot of time uh, so I found the script to or I found some scripts to shorten some of the steps that he have done so the previous video was one of the examples he have I have made uh, a script to uh, shorten or uh, to uh, make the steps to be uh, implemented in less time for example if we know uh, the prerequisites this is the text file or the first text file that Daniel brother Barbarius had give, uh, given us to begin working with his MDT lab. So these were some prerequisites, some programs and some software and some ISO files concerning uh, operating systems. All of these he have given us with the links for download. So this we need to download to begin working or to begin creating his MDT lab. So I have found a script to uh, download all of these links or most of these links automatically and uh, to be in uh, in in uh, to be in a very direct way and to be easy to implement. So we was used Evergreen app to do this uh, process, and we have used some PowerShell scripts to also download all of these files automatically. Okay, so we have done this in the previous video. Today we have finished. Uh, we have already finished this text. We will begin working with the second uh, text file that Daniel Barbarius has give us. These are the steps. So we have done the prerequisites. Now we will go and begin uh, creating the lab. Okay, we need to have certain virtual machines with certain configuration. We need to have certain uh, uh, operating systems to be uh, installed on these virtual machines. So for example, here he is giving us an introduction. Here is saying that our lab or MDT lab or his MDT lab, you need to have 500 gigabyte of free space he recommend to have the hard disk to be solid state drive because uh, the MDT lab uh, would not work or uh, on regular hard disk or magnetic hard disks. Okay, I have I have seen this on my lab because when I try to use the MDT or to configure the MDT on a, a normal hard disk, it was very very slow. So it is recommended to have solid state drive or NVMe uh, hard disk. This is much much faster type of hard disks. Okay, and to have from 16 to 32 gigabyte of RAM, actually, in my lab, I have used less than that, but uh, this on the cost of the performance, the performance was a little bit slow. Okay, so here is he, he is recommending to have from 16 to 32 gigabyte of RAM, but it is good uh, if you have 16. Okay, and here is working with VM Workstation uh, Pro as a hypervisor. In my lab, I am working with a virtual box okay and then he will begin uh, uh, giving some details he need to to create a domain controller primary domain controller a gateway 
This gateway, it is like the router. He is here is he is making a virtual machine to act as a router, okay? And to have a file server, this file server will contain the sources or the programs that will be used uh, during the deployment or capturing of uh, the Windows 10 uh, operating system or the Windows 10 image. So uh, the sources that will be uh, installed on the captured Windows image, it will be on the file server and the additional software that will be installed during the deployment of Windows 10 image also will be stored on a file server. And then he is putting the MDT as a separate server and here is giving us some uh, recommendations. For example, here is giving uh, the domain controller two CPUs, uh, the gateway two CPUs, uh, uh, the file server two CPUs, and here the MDT server is giving it four CPUs. And we can see this is uh, eight gigabyte of RAM, and this is four gigabyte of RAM. And here we can see this is two gigabyte of RAM and two gigabyte of RAM. Anyway, we will not do all of this because I have already my environment. If you are uh, focusing or if you are uh, uh, seeing the Terminator Lab series, we will see that we have already a domain controller, a, para, a primary domain controller, and we have an additional domain controller, and we have a file server. Not with these requirements, actually. My file server, it's 3 gigabyte of RAM, and my domain controller, it is only 1 gigabyte of RAM. Anyway, I, I cannot increase this hardware requirement or I cannot increase the virtual machine, the virtual machines, uh, uh, virtual machine uh, hardware. So, for example, I cannot increase uh, my domain controller to be, for example, 3 gigabyte of RAM because I have a limited hardware on my laptop. I have only 8 gigabyte of RAM and I have only 4 processors. So, I need to deal with it or I need to deal with this limited hardware. Anyway, so... We will not uh, create a gateway because I have already internet access in my lab. I have a domain controller, I have a file server, and what I will do, I will create my MDT server, or create his MDT server, I will put it on my file server. And I will give my file server uh, uh, more RAM, okay, so it can uh, accommodate with the uh, uh, multiple uh, roles installed on it. We all know that I have a server that contains a file server and the DHCP and the WSOS and the MDT will be the next uh, role that will be hosted on this server. So, what we will do today? Today we will follow some of his steps. I will not create these virtual machines or even uh, install the operating system. I will take some of his notes uh, that can be implemented on my domain controller. So, for example, here is giving some recommendations. For example, he, he need to have his num lock to be uh, activated on his uh, virtual machines. This, of course, because he have his password uh, contains some numerical characters, so the num lock will help him to uh, type these uh, numerical characters easily. For example, he's saying that you have to need to have the server manager or all servers to be uh, not loaded automatically or not to be opened automatically okay this is also one of his recommendation he need to configure the time zone we have already done this before our our time zone it is configured using the active directory login script and some power option configuration we need to make uh, some power options to be configured on the servers for example you need to have the screen not uh, to be uh, closed or not to be uh, go to sleep the same as the uh, the same as the hard disk so we need to have them never to close the uh, display or never to close the hard disk and some things for example here you need to change the name of the c partition to make it as windows and uh, for example if we go there and see if we go there if you go there and open that one here you can see that the name of the C partition is called local disk. Here, his recommendation is to change local disk to put instead of it Windows. So to make uh, it uh, to be uh, to be special. If you see the name of the partition, you can know that this is the Windows partition. Uh, maybe someone doesn't know that the C is the Windows partition. Okay, it is by default known to IT uh, IT personnel uh, that the Windows is installed on C partition. But maybe you are not a technical one. If you see uh, the C and beside it Windows, then you can know that this is where the Windows operating system is installed. So, 
here is this is some things he need or he this is his recommendation for example he need to tell us for example to not to hide extensions for known file types this is also another recommendation most of the files on our operating system or on our windows operating system they are uh, begin with the name and then the extension of the file there is an option in windows to hide the extension of the file okay this is not uh, a best practice on a server maybe on a server i need to know the extension of the file this will be uh, a, a best practice on the servers but maybe it is not a best practice on the clients maybe i need to uh, uh, activate this option on the clients so the clients cannot know the extension of the files and then they can play with it or you can do a harm to it okay or or they can change the file or play with it okay so here this is some of his recommendations we'll try to implement it on our ready uh, made servers i need to implement these uh, options for example here you need to have auto arrange for example maybe you can make auto arrange for icons on the desktop this is one thing and he need to install a couple of software one is the big info we have discussed which is the big info before he is recommending to install big info on all of the servers and another thing is to install something called rec server this is uh, an application or it is a script to apply a certain lock screen okay we will see that when we try to apply both of them they will not be applied uh, successfully and i will tell you the reason anyway so these are all uh, some uh, like some uh, notes he is trying to apply to the servers okay this is like uh, general uh, maybe in the general loads or general uh, things when he try to work on the servers he need to be organized and to, to do some steps to make his environment more organized okay so we will see uh, what are the recommendations of Daniel brother Barbarius to uh, make an organized environment okay we will try to take some of his notes and apply it to our lab so let's go and see if we open the lab and then begin working with it so here we can see that we will work with the uh, steps uh, the steps note requisites and then we'll go to the notes and then we'll open the steps we will open it with notepad so when we when we when i open and this is also another text file here these are some commands that will be applied to our file server so for example here he is recommending to install netframe 3.5 on the file server and the server that will contain the mdt and to uh, this is the line to activate the windows server uh, operating system on on the virtual machine this is like an activation key and then we need to install the bitlocker anyway i will not use the bitlocker in this lab here he, in his lab he is applying bitlocker to all of the deployed windows 10 uh, machines okay he tried to apply the bitlocker using the mdt so he's trying to apply bitlocker on the uh, windows 10 deployed machines okay so this is we will not use bitlocker and this uh, line is to install the file server uh, role this is already done we have done this before and this to install the branch cache this is an option to increase the speed or to increase the performance of the deployment okay this is to make the communication between the wds and the clients during the deployment to be faster and more reliable okay this is branch cache and then the last one is data duplication this is an option to uh, you can use it to uh, find more space through deleting data duplication okay this is also it is used to uh, increase the uh, the hard disk uh, space on the file server so we will install these two on our file server we didn't do or we didn't add these two options and we have done this before we will ignore this one we have already our uh, file server operating system activated operating system activated and 
the net frame it is already installed so this is also a couple of things we need to note so let's go and see we will begin working with our uh, virtual environment we will open the uh, virtual box and as you can see here that most of my virtual machines uh, is not uh, configured as Daniel Brother Barbaris was configuring them in in his lab I have my domain controller with less RAM with less processor the same if you can see here for example now this is the uh, if you go a little bit further here let's let me open so here we can see this is the file server DHCP and WSOS and in the future it will be the MDT and the WDS we can see this is 3 gigabyte of RAM and I have uh, three hard disks this is the same as Daniel Brother Barbarius is recommending and uh, I have only one processor okay so I have only one processor here and two network cards he didn't uh, include this in his lab so I need to increase the RAM a little bit because the uh, the load on this server will be huge because now he's hosting a lot of roles okay so we need to increase the uh, RAM of this server and here we can see this is the primary domain controller this is only one gigabyte of RAM and by the way it will work but the performance will be less okay so Daniel is recommending some uh, or some uh, some configuration to his virtual machines to make the performance acceptable okay anyway and by the way all of the hard disk uh, or the lab here or these virtual machines are uh, created on uh, magnetic hard disks not SSD so the performance is also slow okay so this is one of the things to take note <laughs> we will open the primary domain controller So here we can see this what I need to implement we need on all of the servers to have the lock screen this lock screen okay we will do this using script and we need also to uh, install big info on all of the servers so uh, let me show you all the big info so all of the servers will have the same uh, the same view like this one okay on all of the servers okay so this is also best practice to install big info on all of the servers to give you more info about uh, the server state or the server hardware state okay so now we have opened the primary domain controller now we are opening the file server <coughs> <coughs> now as we, as we see here this is the lock screen it is the normal one we need to change it to be as the previous one Now we are logging into the uh, file server and by the way uh, the script that will change the lock screen and the setup of the big info on all of the servers these two the lock screen and the big info installation will fail uh, it will not uh, take effect why because I have a group policy that force a certain background and a certain lock screen you need to deactivate these two group policies so the big info can work and the lock screen will work so this is why uh, the lock screen was not changed on the file server and the big info will not work on the file server okay so let's see now this is the reason why uh, the big info was not working and the lock screen was not working you need when you are when you are applying big info to have no screen or no uh, desktop uh, background on the server okay so now I will see we will begin applying some of his notes first of all we need to uh, disable the server manager to be auto uh, auto opened or auto uh, loaded when the user login to the server So this is basically some steps to organize your environment before 
installing the MDT and the WS. Here we see we will open the power options. And then we will see that we have the screen not to uh, close or the display not to be closed. Never. Okay. Maybe this uh, or closing the display and the hard disk can be closed if you are working on a battery. Okay. Not on a regular current or a regular power or regular, uh, regular uh, source of power. Okay. So here we can see if you open battery, okay, here the screen will never be uh, closed and the same for the hard disk. If you open power and sleep option, the screen will not sleep and the hard disk will not sleep. This should be done on all of the servers, okay? So this is a best practice, okay? I think by the way, it is already activated. If you install Windows Server, it is by default or the power options will be never and never. So let's see or let me show you all. So if you open my computer or this PC, we will see here that I have already changed local disk to Windows. Simply by right click on the partition and tell him rename, then you can change the name. So we can see this is the other partition, which is for the data. And the third one will be for the MDT. Okay, this will be later, but we will have uh, a separate hard disk for the MDT. Okay, will be installed on it, and all of the Windows captured images images will be uh, saved to this partition. Anyway, <laughs> so now we can see this is the uh, option. It will be balanced power, or the balanced plan power. We can see here turn off display never and never and this will be the same for the hard disks okay okay so the time zone it is already uh, configured we don't need to uh, change it or we don't need to activate it it's already on Cairo time zone and this is applied using uh, the active directory login script here we will activate the option of file uh, name extensions here we are telling him to display the file extensions for known uh, files instead of display the known file extensions for uh, for the files or for any file and here we can see we need to do this we need to hide extension for known files we need to deactivate it or we need to uncheck it now the extensions for the file will be uh, uh, displayed and we need to tell him to uh, when we open the file explorer we need it to be directed to this pc not to the quick access menu okay so this is another thing we need to uh, focus on or this one of the recommendations that uh, let me have a little bit here again I need, I need to show you something here guys we can go further if we open again let me show you so here here when you open this pc it will be directed to uh, sorry, we'll open this computer or the, the computer, it will be directed to this PC, not to the quick access menu. Okay, so this is one thing we need to uh, <coughs> we need to uh, activate. And this is some of Daniel uh, Brother Barbarius notes. Okay, so now we will go and uh, uncheck hide extensions for known files, known file types. Okay, and then we will tell him open file explorer to this PC not quick access menu okay so this is also another thing I think here what happened here that it had already uh, go when you open the explorer it will go to the hard disks it will not go to the quick access menu anyway so let's continue <laughs> Now we need to uh, configure, I think, the big info and the lock screen. <coughs> so let's see what is the next step. Okay. So we'll pause the video. And then we'll open the server manager and then make sure that it will not auto load 
when the user logged in uh, to the server okay I will open the server manager okay and if you open manage okay and then go and they go to the server manager options we will see that do not start server manager automatically at login this is already activated and it is dimmed why because I have already activate this option using the group policy and no one can change it unless he play with the group policy or deactivate it from the group policy so this is a good option okay no one can uncheck it and it, it is it is only uh, deactivated or unchecked from the group policy <laughs> so this is one thing and this will be done on all of the servers so this is this we do this step to uh, to free some ram uh, ram space okay or to free some memory from for uh, for the server okay and then here is saying that you need to install VMware tools we have done this but through the virtual box something called virtual box guest additions we have already done this during the deployment or during the, the creation of these virtual machines so the computer name we have already give our servers a name <laughs> so this all of this is done we need to make auto arrange for our icons on the desktop we will do that so we'll go that and right click and tell him to auto arrange uh, the uh, the icons okay okay auto arrange so this is another thing and then the next step is to install the big info uh, program and the lock screen so we'll go and do that <laughs> We all we have all of our scripts and our notes and our documentation that Daniel Brother Barbarius have created. Okay, it's in MDT Lab. So we have made a folder that contains all of the material that he used to create his MDT and WS Lab. Okay, so we can see that we get from the deploy, we will get the big info for servers and the lock screen for servers. These two, we need to install it on all of the servers. Okay, so we'll do that and as we can see if we try to implement both uh, programs the big info it will be installed but uh, it will not work and as for the lock screen the same will apply because as I said before I have two group policies that force a certain background and a certain lock screen we need to deactivate these two group policies okay so now this is the script to install the big info silently okay so this is one thing so it is already installed we install this on the file server and we need to install it on the primary domain controller so now we need to install uh, the reg server or the script that will apply a certain lock screen to the server this is the second one here we can see that saying is big info it is already configured and it will be uh, it, it will be configured and it will appear the next login okay so this will not happen because I logged in the next time or the the future time it didn't work okay so <laughs> now we will ignore this one and then begin installing the lock screen and by the way the lock screen will be applied by running this register key so this script will apply uh, a certain lock screen through the registry keys okay in the folder okay these are the register keys okay you can see this is a certain uh, jpg that will act as a lock screen okay so this is simply all of what Daniel is doing now he is preparing or he's organizing his environment okay and make it more uh, organized and more uh, let's see uh, more uh, uh, cozy or more or more to be uh, more uh, uh, relaxing okay now we will install the script this script will it should apply a certain lock screen but as we see if I try to uh, lock the windows and try to log in back still the lock screen is not applied okay okay if tell him lock 
you can see here that the lock screen is not applied this is done already on the uh, domain controller okay but this can't be applied on uh, the file server so as I said before in in upcoming video I will solve this problem I will disable both group policies uh, concerning the background and the uh, uh, lock screen so now he is trying to tell us to install netframe 3.5 this is already done before and then there is one of his scripts to use it this script will ensure some important windows services to be running okay and i will try to see or try to get you a brief about these services and why they are important uh, to be running okay some of these services i see it as unnecessary and some are very critical and they need to be running okay his his script will ensure some services to run automatically and uh, and he will ensure that they are running so first of all he will change the state of some of the windows services uh, from running manually for example or disabled to be running automatically and he will sure will be sure that or he want to make sure that these services are running anyway we will when we come to these services i will discuss them one by one now here i am trying to uh, what i am trying to do now here i am trying to uh, get the server services script and we will see what are the services that Daniel is uh, eager and he is uh, uh, very curious or very uh, anxious uh, to make sure they are running let's see the services here I'm trying to uh, log into the uh, domain controller or the primary domain controller to install the big info and uh, this lock screen So if you go there and then try to see uh, the, the script itself If we pause the video and get it back Here we can see that these are about We can see the script, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 There are 5 services The first service, he is telling him to set the service to start up manually this service is by default disabled. This is called Maps Broker. This is a service uh, that is related to downloaded maps on uh, on the server. Okay, so by disabling this service, the applications or the on the server that use downloaded maps from the internet will not work. I don't know if there is any applications on the server that use maps that are downloaded from the internet. So this is uh, curiously, or I don't know. I think. There is no such applications on the server anyway they are disabled by default and i insist to leave it disabled okay because i think this will be a security hazard anyway so saying he will change them from disabled to manual and this is to set the first service from uh, it is uh, disabled it will be manual and the second service is diagnostic uh, related to diagnostic i will show you all what this service mean here he also setting this service to run automatically and by the way by default it is running automatically so i don't see why he is insisting to do a script to change uh, this the startup type of this service it is already automatic and as for this it is disabled okay and then he will start the service so he set the service state uh, to a certain state and then he will start the service the same for this service it is uh, changed from a certain state to automatic and then he will start the service the same for this service it will be changed from a certain state to automatic and then he will start it the same as well so let's see one by one what are these services what is the description of these services and we will ask the ai and see <coughs> if these services are important and we need to focus on <coughs> so we will open the administrative windows administrative tools And then we'll open services. One thing to take note here that most of these services in the script, these are the real name. 
uh, in the services console they are uh, named differently they are uh, named according to a display name so the service have a real name and a display name the display name these are the display names of the services the real names it is not uh, it is not written here okay so for example if you see something called maps broker you will not find the service here called maps broker it is named differently according to a display name it is named downloaded maps uh, manager okay, so this is named differently okay for example how did i know that i will show you all how did i know that just to tell him get service name this name and it will tell me the display name okay so just wait with me we will see now that this service called downloaded maps manager this is what he is referring to in the script add maps broker so the service this is the display service name the real service name it's called maps broker okay so i don't know why microsoft is making two different names okay so they can be one anyway so we will see that one of the services it is disabled by default so you can see that maps broker it is disabled by default and this is a uh, a good option okay so now we tell him get service <laughs> and you'll see that this service is it is named differently <laughs> so if you copy that and tell him get service name <laughs> and you will type it paste and press enter Now we can see that this is the name, the real name of the service. Its name is Maps Broker, and it is displayed or it is written in the services console as Downloaded Maps Manager. Okay, so this is it, and it is stopped and disabled. So here he is intending it, or the script will change it from disabled to manual. If we see the description of the service, he is saying that Windows Service for Application Access to Downloaded Maps. This service is started. Uh, let me continue started on demand by application accessing download maps so this is related to certain applications that need to access downloaded offline maps okay so this is one thing uh, this is a description of the service if we try to ask uh, the or let me show you all we can ask uh, certain ai tools uh, I will show you all later, but let me first uh, go and continue with you. I will discuss the other services and then I will tell you what are the maps broker. I will ask the AI about the maps broker. So now this is a service. I will leave it disabled. So I am here. I am not agreeing with with Daniel to make it uh, manual. Okay. Then we will ask about the other service, which it's it is DPS or it is written in a different name it's called diagnostic policy service this is a service that is related to collecting diagnostic data okay to troubleshoot problems and solve them on the windows so this is relating to uh, telemetry data or something like this is related to collecting data or this is a service it is responsible for collecting data that will be used to diagnose uh, 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 Windows uh, server problems okay so now this should be working because it is very critical okay because this will help you to diagnose uh, certain problems on the server and this also will help you to send data to Microsoft to diagnose uh, certain problems related to your server now let's go to the other service which is <laughs> UALSVC this is called user access logging service okay this is related to logging uh, uh, user accessing on the server so it is related to the logging service this will log all of the user activities on the server so this is a very very critical service if it's not working it will not log the user activity on a server okay so let's see the uh, description of this service and then we will go to the AI and then ask him uh, 
so it can give us uh, more info. This service logs unique client access requests, okay, in the form of the IP address and username. So this is will log uh, or it will log unique client access request. Okay, I think unique client access request here is re referring to unique clients like administrators or local administrators or domain admins. Anyway, so he will log the user, the user logging into the machine with his username, the IP address of the server and the the products installed on the server and other very critical data so okay let's go further products and roles on the server so he will log the ip address the username the roles installed on the server the products installed on the server so these are all logged uh, in addition to the user uh, logging into the machine and you can use powershell to query this data or this logged uh, data Okay, if we try to go and ask the AI, what is the user, let's go here, this is the Cloud2 AI, what is the user access logging service in Windows and what does it do? The user access logging service in Windows is a background service that logs user access and events on a Windows system. Here are some key details about what it do. Its full name is Windows Event Log. So this is related to event logs in Windows with a display name of user access logging. So the real name is Windows Event Log. I think this is different because it is uh, named and this is the full name. Okay, and this is the display name. It's responsible for creating and managing security system and application event logs in Windows. These events logs record various system security and application events like user logins, policy changes, program installation. So we can see this related to logging. Okay, logging of user activity. The service determines which events should be logged based on the audit policy. So it is also related to the audit policy. If the audit policy is uh, activating some certain events to be logged or to be recorded, this will be done through the user access logging service. Okay, it works. Is the event log service? So it is. It working in coordination with another service called event log service to actually write events to the log files stored in this location. If the user access logging service is stopped or disabled, most auditing stops and new events are not logged. Okay, it starts automatically in boot by default to ensure continuous event logging. So it is also started by default, but it is a wise uh, thing to make sure that it is already running. Okay, so you can make a schedule task to uh, check this service and see if it is running or not. And if it is not running, you can uh, ensure or you can uh, do a script to run it or start it. So in summary, the user access logging service enables event log creation and management, allowing administrator to audit system and user activity on a Windows machine based on log data. Disabling will severely limit logging and auditing capabilities. This is another uh, important thing about this service. It should be running and you should check it uh, every time, okay? Let's go to what is the DPS Windows service and what does it do? This is diagnostic policy service. It is a background Windows service that facilitates troubleshooting and diagnostic collect data collection. Okay, So it collects data to diagnose problems and troubleshoot problems. Here are some key details about this, what it does. We can see here the AI is giving more details and simple explanation about what does these services do. Full service name is Diagnostic Policy Service under Windows Services, introduced in Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008, helps manage diagnostic policies that control what troubleshooting data can be collected. We can see here there is some diagnostic policies. I think he's relating it to telemetry. There is a group policy called telemetry data. This uh, identifies or, or says what kind of data that will be collected for uh, diagnostic uh, issues okay so this is diagnostic policies diagnostic policy determine which data gathering is allowed and for how long this data is retained okay this is another thing and this is also related to the telemetry data uh, group policy in the windows dps makes diagnostic tools and troubleshooting services aware of these policies so this service is very very critical to uh, collect diagnostic data and to inform different diagnostic tools and troubleshooting services uh, about uh, the the diagnostic policies okay it works with components like problem reports and solutions to adhere to configured policies 
policies control privacy setting around error reporting and crash dumps <laughs> dps starts automatically by default so diagnostic can work or diag diagnosis can work disabling may break certain features diagnostic policies can be configured under local group policy or registry anyway this is the diagnostic uh, or this is the service in summary the dps applies configured diagnostic policies to help manage what troubleshooting data can be collected by windows and related diagnostic services this allows balancing debugging needs with user privacy so this is basically related to collecting diagnostic data let's continue and see the other services so now we have already seen two services let's go and see the other services <laughs> there is another two services we need to discuss and we can see all of these services are automatically started something called delay restart so if we go and see the other service which is called msdtc this is another service <laughs> msdtc we can see it is named differently it's not called msdtc and this is not called ualsvc it's called user access logging service let's see what this service is named it's called distributed transaction coordinator this is something from its name it is a coordinator it coordinates between different applications different databases different services okay so this is a coordinator okay but here we can see coordinates transactions that span multiple resources multiple resource managers such as database measures queues so it is a coordinator okay but here the description is not enough so i went to the ai and tried to see what he will say here is saying that it's called microsoft distributed transaction coordinator it is a windows service that manages distributed transaction here are some key details about what that it does full name is distributed transaction coordinator allows transaction to span across multiple resources like databases message queues file systems coordinates commits across all resources to ensure atomic auto automacy anyway so uh, it, it is a coordinator and here the description it was not uh, clearly so i'll tell him to give me an example he is saying that mdc it is like a wedding planner for database transaction it coordinates all of the different steps and participants to ensure the overall transaction succeeds or fails as one unit so it is a coordinator it coordinates between different databases between different <laughs> services between different applications here is say another example mdc is like a conductor of an orchestra when it comes to distributed transaction it makes or it sure all different components commit or roll back in perfect harmony so let's give us an example what are the applications that use the mdt service here is saying that here is some of the famous applications that use MD msdtc uh, microsoft sql server can use msdtc when transactions involve multiple databases servers or third-party resources uh, microsoft sharepoint sharepoint can leverage msdtc for transactions involving multiple content databases uh, Another thing, Microsoft Enterprise Single Sign SSO. This is a very critical one. The SSO service utilizes MSDTC for synchronization. Third-party databases like Oracle, DB2, and other things. So this is a couple of programs or applications that can utilize the MSDTC service. And this is a very, very critical one. So we need to make sure it is up and running. This is one thing we need to make sure. And it is already started by default. <laughs> so we will go to the last service and see uh, what it is. And we can see that Daniel is focusing on famous uh, services that actually they are critical. And if one of these services is not running on a server, it will do uh, or it will do harm, and it will it will make some problems. So let's see the last service, USOSVC. And press enter update orchestrator service this is a service that works in conjunction with the wsos service and we will discuss that now it is managing windows updates if stopped 
your device will not be able to download and install latest updates so this orchestra or this service communicates with the Microsoft website and download the updates this is uh, the, the function of this service or it communicates to the WSOS to get the updates okay so this is a very critical one it is basically on every computer every server on every workstation so this is the client side when you are trying to download Windows updates as for the WSOS service this is the server side okay so let's see or let me open and show you all another thing here if you go to the AI and try to see or give us a description about this service here telling us this is a background service that enables communication here I'm trying to tell him to relate this service to WSOS service he's saying that this service it is the one responsible for communicating with the WSOS to manage software updates okay so this is if you have WSOS if you don't have it will uh, uh, communicate to the Microsoft website directly so this is the name Windows update it is the client side service that interacts with WSOS server side service it is responsible for detecting downloading and installing Windows updates on the local computer the service communicates to WSOS server or Microsoft website to receive approved updates for the client administrative to configure WSOS to approve or decline updates for computers and Active Directory this is the service or this is the function of the WSOS USOSVC checks the WSOS server for any approved updates and install them setting like WSOS server URL update deferral policies etc can configure SOSVC behavior so anyway this is related uh, to uh, the WSOS in somehow and if it is not working then you will not be able to communicate with the WSOS server or communicate with the Microsoft website if USB is stopped or disabled the computer cannot download or install Windows updates in summary it is the client side service that interacts with WSOS for managing Windows updates WSOS centralized update approvals while SUSVC handles update detection and installation on individual computers okay so this is what I was talking about so this is good let me see how much time we have okay so we have already seen all of these services we have already installed them <laughs> so now we can continue seeing the uh, the notes for Daniel Brother Barberis I think we can now uh, here I'm going to the uh, domain controller or the primary domain controller and installing the uh, big info and the lock screen <laughs> So now I'm going to the uh, primary domain controller and installing the uh, big info and the lock screen and now here Daniel is giving us another uh, note he need to install certain software on the server that will host the MDT he need to install uh, CM trace to see the MDT logs he need to install NetFrame 6, he need to install the Edge, he need to install the PowerShell 7 and the Visual Studio of, or the Visual Visual Code actually I will install two of these I will install the CM Trace and the PowerShell 7 I don't need NetFrame 6 because uh, none of my applications are using NetFrame 6 and Edge I have already installed it before so I will install these two uh, programs and they will install 7-zip on the server I think I have already installed it and notepad++ I have already installed it before and then we we'll install the report viewer for viewing WSOS reports and the Orica software that will let us examine any MSI file and see the installation switches for this MSI file so let's continue and see <coughs> so I am not following Daniel Brother Barbaris steps uh, 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 in details I am taking what I need only because I have some of these steps already uh, configured or already done so let's open this is the primary domain controller now we will copy all of this software and uh, we will install it on the file server that will host the WDS now we can go to the uh, 
to the folder in the TLAB and then go to the files and then prerequisites and then go to the tools and then capture we will get the CM trace and the PowerShell 7 and the age I have already installed age before but I think this is maybe an updated version of age okay so I will put it there and then install it as we can see all of these steps are not related to the installation of MDT or WDS but it is preparing the environment uh, for the installation of the MDT and WDS okay so now we will install these softwares now this is the primary domain controller we can go and install uh, the uh, big info and the lock screen so it will take some time okay this is the same trace and you will see after installing this software uh, the event viewer will not be the default uh, program to view logs on the windows this will be the default one okay this script will do that it will install the CM trace and it will make it the default program for uh, viewing events on the Windows okay and you'll see it is a very very easy program and a very very organized program you can use it to uh, view event logs on Windows okay so let's wait and see when we install the MDT I will use the program and show you all how it is working okay we can see this all is related to uh, the extensions that this program will open okay and then you open the PowerShell 7 then we install it so the process is running smoothly now we will install the software So it will take some time. We can run quickly. Okay, we'll pause the video. Now we are on the primary domain controller. We will install the big info and the lock screen. So all of the sources and all of Daniel uh, Brother Barbarius documentation are it is or it is in one folder called MDT Lab. <laughs> so we will go and open and this are uh, these files already shared on this virtual machines or these folders are shared on the virtual machine so we'll open and then download or uh, copy the files so now we go to the folder so when i install powershell 7 and we need to uh, check a couple of options to enable PowerShell remoting to uh, to enable uh, updating the PowerShell 7 through uh, WSOS or uh, Microsoft so we can see there's a couple of options to enable PowerShell remoting to add open here if you right click you will see uh, a menu concerning PowerShell 7 uh, if you right click you will see open here PowerShell 7 and you will see run with PowerShell 7 with the right click if you right click on a desktop you will see open powershell 7 window and run with powershell uh, uh, 7 <coughs> okay so this is related to powershell uh, files and this is related to the desktop anyway so these options will help you to access powershell 7 through different uh, ways okay or through different methods <coughs> next and then to update this through microsoft update or wsos okay then we install <coughs> sorry guys because I, I am having a flu so here we are, we are installing the partial 7 it will take some time Okay, so I can go to the primary domain controller and then install the big info and the lock screen. This is the deploy, and this is the two 
folders that we have installed on the file server <laughs> so we'll copy them As we see here that the performance is very slow and we are having some hang issues because uh, this is a, a magnetic hard disk and I am giving this server uh, one gigabyte of RAM so this is not uh, equated or not enough okay but it is it is good it will work okay so here again I, I the paste process didn't complete so I am copying and pasting again so Again, I will copy and paste. So don't worry, we will copy and paste again. Now we are installing uh, the PowerShell 7. Okay, I am pasting the two folders. So let's continue and see. This is the PowerShell 7. We successfully installed both. I will restart the server to see if the uh, lock screen will apply but it didn't apply and then I will install 7-zip and uh, a, a net uh, pad or notepad++ plus plus. <laughs> so now we will install the lock screen okay and we'll install the big info and by the way I tried these two files on my workstation and they successfully or they was implemented successfully just to make sure that the issue here was with the group policy okay so this was how I know that the group policy was the issue because I have implemented it on my laptop and it was working okay so now we'll install the big info and this is partial 7 so it's installed successfully we will restart the server and see if uh, the uh, lock screen will apply now I am uh, deleting the files okay now we will restart and see the edge I have already installed the edge so I don't need them so here I am also deleting these files then we will restart the server and see and by the way you need to run this server services script on all of the servers not only on the file server okay so now I have already or I make a restart and see if the lock screen will work So we'll continue and then we'll pause the video and then we'll return back okay it will take as we see here we have having some performance issues so here this is basically we'll install the same so we have a repeated process it's already done before so we run as an administrator and then it will run okay and we have already restarted the server the file server then we will log in okay the same process so we will log in and then I will install 7-zip and notepad and report the viewer on the MDT server or the file server so all of the software that you have installed it will be only installed on the MDT server okay not on all servers so now we are installing them I am going and copying the uh, sources or the installation files okay and then we will open and then mdt lab and then we will open files then requisites and then tools and then deploy <laughs> and then we will copy 7-zip and notepads and report to viewer okay and remember the orca by the way copy and then paste 7-zip to open text on this server seven, uh, sorry 7-zip to uh, open compressed files and notepad to open text files on the server and report to viewer to view the source reports okay <coughs> so we'll install them one by one
very simple and easy straightforward install so Daniel brother Barbaris preferred to use the notepad plus plus as his default uh, text viewer and editor okay so we close and then we will begin installing the notepad and then the last one is the report viewer <laughs> next then I agree then next install next create shortcut and then install So it will take some time, but anyway. So the Orca here, it is already uh, in the tools, but it is in the SDK folder. It is very simple. It will be also installed using a script. Okay. So I can show you all because it is not recorded. If you go to the uh, here, we go to the MDT. So here we go this and then open and then MDT lab and then we'll go to the prerequisites and then the SDK and then this is the Orca here we'll install or we have the installation files and the script okay we have done this before so we will continue anyway so let's continue further it's in the SDK okay and other videos we will install the uh, SQL uh, server but not now we will install it after installing the MDT okay so now we need to install uh, the report viewer I think we didn't install the report viewer still so let's continue so now we will shut down the server okay we have finished so we'll shut down the server and the other server the primary domain controller we have already installed both uh, the uh, big info and the uh, and the lock screen and both didn't work so let me show you all how I will uh, implement both on my workstation if we go let me show you all how this will be done just wait for a moment now I will go to uh, the folder that contains Daniel Brother Barbarius uh, files here we go and then we open files and then open prerequisites and then we open tools and then we open deploy okay we will install big info for workstations and we will install uh, the other one for uh, uh, lock screen so now I will install it and we will see how the big info will be applied to my machine because I don't have a certain or I am not forcing a certain background by the way I am forcing a certain background and ca it cannot be changed this is also configured through the group policy so the main issue it's not the background but it, it cannot be changed so this is another thing okay so now we are installing I have installed the big info and then we will install uh, the lock screen and we will see how this will be applied okay so if we tell him edit and then run the script we will see that it will be applied okay so now we will open and then we let's see here it is the big info it is already applied okay and if I try to uh, install the lock screen and see okay you will see it will be applied so let's open and install the uh, lock screen tools and then deploy and then break win 10 and then install it okay and install the script and then if I try to lock the windows or lock or uh, display the lock screen let's wait and see if I try to tell him lock okay So if I tell him lock uh, the windows, 
okay right okay and lock okay you lock so we can see here it is already applied so because I don't have a certain lock screen applied and I cannot I don't have a policy to prevent changing the lock screen but in my domain I have a group policy to apply a certain background and center lock screen and they cannot be changed this is the end of our video hope this video is informative for you all and thank you all for viewing thank you so much